Hey everyone, Richard here. So today I wanted to talk about landmarks. Um, landmarks are really important. If we can understand what something is and where it is in the body and its relationship to other things can really help us with our construction and to help get our thoughts in place. So I want to do a series of these landmark videos and I wanted to start today with the ACES because from the front view, I believe it's one of the most important landmarks for understanding where the upper and the lower torso connect. So let's take a look. All right, so we've discussed in, in the past, you know, upper torso, we're going to use a box for the rib cage. Same thing for the lower torso for the pelvis. Let's say we have something like this. And as we've discussed before, we're looking for the ACES, which is approximately one third of the way down the box um, for the lower torso, about here and here. And what this tells us is this is where the iliac crest comes from behind the form, kind of comes around and connects to here. Um, same thing on this side, iliac crest goes around. And if we could see it, it would be coming down to the back of the form here to the sacrum. Why do I think this is so important? Um, if we draw an imaginary line between these two points of the ACES, it really helps us establish where the axis of the lower torso is, um, help give us a sense of the, the relationship between the, up, the axis of the upper torso. Obviously, we've discussed before, in that case, we can, we can kind of use the, the clavicles to some, to some extent to give us that um, as they come up this way. But for the, for the lower torso and the connection of the upper and the lower torso, I find the ACEs to be absolutely um, instrumental in our understanding how these two things connect. Um, so here we have it. We have one point here and here, and coming down from here, actually connected to the ACEs, coming down this way is something called the inguinal ligament. Um, connects down to the pubic bone right down here and here. And even just adding that, adding this, this triangle type shape, we immediately start to get structure, right? We start to see it more in a three dimensional shape. Um, the abdominal wall also comes down this way and actually attaches to this inguinal ligament. Um, so if we understand that, once again, we can start to develop structure. Um, we could add the obliques coming in this way that sit on top of the iliac crest here and come down and travel down to about here. So in a sense, you could say even the ACES is an attachment point for, or at least a visual attachment point for um, where the obliques come down and where they end, right? You could do the same on this side. You get something like that. Okay. Um, if we come down, let's just get in a volume for the leg here, something like this, maybe the knees approximately here. Um, so we've got three muscles that attach a, a, approximately at this point, um, two that attach directly to the ACEs and the third kind of uses it as a starting off point. So let's go through them. Um, the first is the rectus femoris. This is the largest muscle of the quadricep group. It's the front leg muscle that comes down this way, and it comes down like so, and it comes down and attaches down to the knee down here. Um, this is its origin point of all four quadricep muscles. It's the only one that attaches to the ACEs. But if we understand that, then we can really get a good sense of this front structure and its beginning and end point, right? Um, the second muscle I want to talk about is the sartorius. We've discussed this before. The sartorius is the longest muscle in the body. It also, it's like a belt-like muscle um, in, in its appearance. And it also attaches at the aces here. And it comes down like this. And then it attaches at the side of the knee here. It actually has a little bit of thickness to it, but it comes down something like that. Why the sartorius is so important, let me just draw it as a single line on this side. 
comes down, something like that. For me, the sartorius is really important, as I've said before in the figure drawing fundamentals class, that it helps me understand that we have this type of shape to to the volume. This the sartorius coming down this way, it divides kind of like the inner thigh in here to to the rest of the the volume of the leg. So sometimes you're going to be able to see the sartorius quite well. Other times it's going to suggest itself, it's going to hint that it's there. But understanding that um, and whether you sometimes whether you can even see it or not, to kind of lightly draw it in really helps with that subdivision of the leg. So it's a really useful muscle to know about. The third muscle that attaches at the sartorius, well it starts at the sartorius but it also actually attaches along the, um, the iliac crest here, is called the tensa fascia latte. Um, and that comes down this way and then it actually comes down the leg this way and it attaches to something called the iliotibial tract. And we're going to take a look on the ecoche, how these things are from the side, how they're relevant to each other. Um, but the tensor fascia lati, it starts at the connection point here um, at the asus and its mass comes out something like this. So when you see people standing on one leg and there's a lot of pressure on that one leg, you'll really get a sense of that, the mass of that, um, this tensor fascia latte coming around like this. So it's three muscles, rectus femoris, sartorius, and tensia fascia latte, all connecting at this point. As I said, on top of that, <coughs> when we take the oblique coming down and connecting down to here, and this being its end point, you can see how important it is that we understand the location of, of these two points. Um, they really are the connection point between the upper and the lower torso, in my mind, from the, from the front view. So let's take a look at some examples. Um, I want to look at the accroche, and then we're going to look at a couple of models and look at these um, muscles and their attachment to the ACES in kind of real life. Okay. So here I have my accroche, um, and it's a really useful tool to be able to see how these things in relationship to other in 3D form because we can turn the model and we can look at it. Um, okay, so the iliac crest coming around this way, the asis right here, and obviously here. The um, rectus femoris that we discussed, the, the large muscle of the quadricep connecting behind the sartorius and the tensor fascia latte here, but coming down this way, coming down the form and attaching to the knee right there. Once again, same thing on that side. Then we have the sartorius, this very strap-like muscle coming down, making that subdivision, as I said, between the, the inner thigh and the outer bulk mass of the, of the leg coming down here attaching right down at the, just below the knee there. And then the tensor fascia latte connecting once again at the sartorius, coming down here and connecting with the iliotibial tract, which is this fascia that's coming down the leg here, gives that side of your leg, that very flat appearance, you know, that feels quite flat in comparison to the roundness of the front of the leg. That is um, the iliotibial tract that's, that's connecting that. It actually connects up, as you can see, to the gluteus maximus as well, coming around this way, kind of, so these kind of, then you've got gluteus medius here in the middle. So tensia fascia latte, gluteus medius, and gluteus maximus. So you can see how these ideas all kind of connect and come down the form. Let's just look at it on the other side, might give us slightly different view, same kind of thing, tensor fascia latte here and the iliotibial tract coming down the leg and attaching just below the knee there. All right, let's take a look at a couple of models. As you can see, um, especially in this particular pose, it's all much more subtle than it is on the crochet, right? Um, 
So it's useful for us to kind of see it in almost like an exaggerated form and then to look at it um, in real life. But this right here, this is obviously, this is what we're looking for. This is the asus right here, this, this bony protrusion on both sides of the form. And as you can see, the, the iliac crest kind of comes around this way um, and goes around the form this way. Here, it would be coming around something like this. Once again, if we drew that imaginary line coming across the form like this, start to give us a sense of where this, the, uh, the axis of this uh, lower box that we use for the um, lower torso. So this is really, this is really useful. If we can see that and that, we can understand this and that gets us where we need to go. Okay, so here's another example. As you can see, it, it takes on a slightly different kind of visual form. The bones of the asis aren't as pronounced, but we know that the oblique is going to be coming down this way and it's, it's going to give us our location right here, right? Because the oblique is essentially sitting on top of the iliac crest. So it would be a really useful kind of exercise to look at a lot of reference and just say to yourself, okay, this is what I'm going to try and locate. I'm going to try and locate the asis, the iliac crest, and where the obliques kind of sit on top of that form and um, try and, you know, I get a deeper understanding of what that looks like. Um, if we just take a look at this, so the rectus femoris coming down, once again, we can kind of get a sense of it coming this way, up to here. You can see, you can actually even see um, the sartorius in this area here, which is kind of getting in front, going in front of the, um, the rectus femoris here, but the rectus femoris would be sitting in something like that. The sartorius, as I said, once again, it's connecting here, very, very subtle, if we could see it, it would be coming through the form like this. It's probably sitting right about in here. Um, you can even, even get a real gentle sense for that on this side too. Um, as we discussed in the 2D drawing, you get this division. And this is primarily because of the sartorius cutting across the form this way. And finally, we get the tensor fascia latte, which you can also see sitting in here, coming down this way, and then running down the side of the leg here. So that would be somewhere in there like that. Um, more subtle on this side, it's relaxed, but that tensor fascia latte is here. What you're seeing here is actually the gluteus medius. Um, same on this side, this area here would be gluteus medius. Um, but we have tensor fascia latte, sartorius, and rectus femoris coming across this way. So try to look for the try to look for these ideas. Um, as I said, I just think that this is one of the most important landmarks from the from the front view for the connection of the upper and the lower torso. I hope that helps, um, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Okay, thanks, take care everyone, see you soon.